Today, let's collect Rogue. Welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting, and finally, another episode of Let's Collect. Today, we're collecting Rogue, um, one of my favorite X-Men, a uh, big part of the 90s cartoon and the X-Men movies. Uh, so Rogue and Marie uh, is going to be the subject of our Let's Collect today. This is going to be your guide to her key comics, her best storylines, and the best covers featuring Rogue. So without further ado, let's get into this list. Uh, Rogue was introduced in Avengers Annual, uh, number 10 in 1981. Um, for my money, one of the worst uh, first appearance covers. <laughs> um, she's not really pictured and yeah, just a cluttered, not one of my favorites. Uh, this book has taken a recent jump because of spec that she's actually going to be the first X-Men and the, to appear in the uh, MCU related to Captain Marvel. We'll get into her relation to Captain Marvel, uh, to Carol Danvers here in a little bit. But yeah, so that's kind of why we're doing this now, because she's been kind of a hot comic. Um, so this book has actually jumped up from what it was. Um, raw copies are going 30 to $80, depending on condition. Um, 9.8s are sitting around 450 to 550 right now. Uh, about a month ago, they were sitting 650, 700 when that first rumor came out. So they've already come back some, um, but uh, still a fairly reasonable first appearance for a major character. Uh, 9.6s can be had for two to 250. So um, Avengers Samuel 10, her first appearance. Um, next up is her second appearance, which is also still not in the X-Men book, which I found a little odd for being such an important X-Men character. So she appears in Avengers Annual and then in ROM 31. Um, this is her second appearance in her first cover. Um, 9.8 of this will cost you about a hundred bucks. Raw copies are going to cost you 10 to 20. Um, our third key rogue comic is Uncanny X-Men number 158. Um, this is her third appearance and her first in the X-Men title. Um, 9.8 of this is going to run you about 125 to 150. So a little bit more than uh, her second appearance because of the tie-in with the X-Men. Plus, it's a little better cover. Um, raw copies of this are, though, in that same 10 to 20-ish kind of dollar range, unless it's a really, really nice copy. Um, our fourth key comic is Uncanny X-Men number 171. And this is where she actually joins the X-Men, this famous... Um, that they use multiple times of welcome to the X-Men Rogue. Hope you survive the experience. They use this with Kitty. Um, and I think they use it with some other characters too. I can't remember now. But um, anyway, uh, 9.8, this is going to cost you $90 to $125. And again, those raw copies, 10 to 20 ish dollar range. Um, next is Marvel Superheroes number 11. And you're probably going to wonder, why is this on the key comics list if you don't know this book? Um, so, originally, Rogue was actually supposed to appear, much like Mystique, um, who she's very closely tied to, in the Miss Marvel series. Um, she was supposed to be in Miss Marvel number 25. Um, that series got canceled after issue 23, so it didn't happen. So then her first appearance... Didn't, that was supposed to be in 1979. Her first appearance as a result didn't happen until 81 in Avengers Annual. This book actually retell, actually tells that original uh, planned story for Miss Marvel number 25 um, and her interactions with Miss Marvel. Um, so a raw copy of this is only going to cost you is going to cost you 10 to 20 bucks, but there's really not hardly any like slab copies out there. But very reasonable book, and you can actually get that what was supposed to be. Her original first appearance. Um, our sixth key comic for Rogue is going to be X-Men Gold number 30. This is just 
not too old, a couple years old at this point. Um, and this is, of course, where she gets married to Gambit. So this is her marriage. Um, this book is a 9.8 of this will run you with the uh, classified cover, which was the one they hid from everybody until right before, um, that actually shows the two of them getting married. It's going to run you 9.8, will run you 60 to 80 bucks. Um, raw copies are basically going to run you that 10 to $15 range for this one. So, um, at number seven on our key comics list, I, I will admit I had to struggle a little bit to actually come up with 10 keys for Rogue. Um, started getting a little thin <laughs> toward the end of this, but still think books that you might want to have if you're a big Rogue collector. Um, and this is Mr. and Mrs. X number nine, another really relatively recent book, but this one retells her origin, um, from before her Battle with Miss, Miss Marvel. Um, and this book can be had for cover price. Um, at number eight on our key comics list is Rogue number one from 1995. And this is her first solo title. Um, she's actually had three kind of limited solo runs. Um, this is the first one. Uh, 9.8 of this is only going to cost you 40 to $70 with raw copies, basically five to 10. So an easy book to get and kind of a fun addition if you're collecting Rogue. Um, our ninth uh, key on the list is um, Uncanny X-Men 269. And the, I put this in the keys because this finally like deals with her introduction. When Rogue was introduced, um, she was actually a villain. Um, she joined the X-Men because she couldn't, at a desperation sort of, because she couldn't control her powers anymore. Um, so she went to Professor X for help. That's kind of how she became a member of the X-Men We'll get into some of those stories here in just a second, but this is the book that actually deals with her introduction. She steals uh, Miss Marvel's powers, basically kills her. Part of her consciousness goes into Rogue. There's, you know, so there's this big long history between those two characters. Um, and this book, she finally deals with that kind of evil act that she done, kind of gets rid of the Miss Marvel persona for good. Um, so. That is why I included it on the list. The so 9.8 of this is only going to run you like 70 or 80 bucks. And again, raw copies 5 to 10. And our final key comic for Rogue is X-Men 103 um, from 2000. And this is the first time that she leads an X-Men team. Um, and this is a 5 to $10 book. Um, good luck finding one uh, slab because it's really not been considered that important. But... It's the first time she's chosen as the leader of the next men. So that would be um, a good book to include in your rogue collection. So with that, we're going to move on to the stories. Uh, first up is Uncanny X-Men 171. We already talked about this. Um, this is kind of her first story as a member of the X-Men. It's considered one of the better rogue stories. Um, so just a cool issue to have both from a key sense, but also from just a reading sense. Um, and 172 and 73 is Wolverine and Rogue in Japan. And this is kind of where she first kind of proves herself to Wolverine that she actually what does can be a member of the X-Men, that she does mean well, um, that she is trying to do like the right thing. Um, she's got a classic cover for 173. Um, and just an excellent, so those three books, 171, 172, 173, um, a great place to start your rogue reading. Um, with that, let's move on to our next story slash storyline. And that gets into uh, Uncanny X-Men number 269 and then 274 and 275. So there's a little gap there in those issues. But those three issues kind of deal with her dealing with the Miss Marvel's personality still being kind of in part of her brain. And then the Savage Land storyline, um, just an excellent uh kind of wraps up this whole thing with Miss Marvel and the split personality that dominated the first decade of Rogue in the comics. Um, and just an excellent, another excellent story for um, spread over three issues that you can read related to Rogue. Um, our next storyline is Uncanny X-Men 235 through 238. And this is the first Geonosis storyline. Um, so her and Wolverine again, off on their own. It's interesting, like, how Wolverine, a lot of these, uh, the female X-Men characters, Kitty, Rogue, Jubilee, like, 
he becomes kind of surrogate father to and goes off on adventures and stuff with. Um, this is kind of another one of those with Rogue. Um, just a great uh, Wolverine Rogue story. Uh, our next story, we actually get a trade and not just looking for individual issues, is X-Men Supernovas. Um, and this collects issues 188 through 199 of the X-Men title. Um, and this is kind of following her taking the lead of her first X-Men team, or her being a leader of an X-Men team. Um, just an excellent story with her as a leader um, that you might want to check out. Uh, next up is Uncanny Avengers, number one, uh, or volume one, uh, the red... What is, I cannot read my own handwriting here. The Red Shadow? The Red Shade? I don't know. I apologize. I can't read that. But Volume 1 of Uncanny Avengers. <laughs> um, it's really bad handwriting. Um, and Rogue, basically, this is where she's part of this Uncanny Avengers team. She's handpicked by Captain America to be part of it. Um, just a good, excellent storyline that you might want to read. And then finally, um, The Age of Apocalypse Omnibus, if you're a Rogue fan... Um, she's one of the few characters that you could argue that actually her life is better during the Age of Apocalypse. Um, she's actually co-leader of the X-Men. She's happily married. She has a kid. Um, so just an interesting storyline and very a lot of good stuff with Rogue in those. So with that, let's move on to the cool covers. Um, and first up, so I will say before I get into the covers, um, Compared to the other X ladies, Rogue has got is been very limited in the number of cool covers that she's got, and I kind of expected that with Jean and Storm and Emma and Psylocke or whatever maybe. But like even compared to like Magic and Kitty and like some of the others, like Rogue has not got a ton of fantastic covers. Um, some of her best ones are usually her and Gambit in some sort of embrace. Um, but I only included one of those, and that is the best her cover of her and Gambit, in my opinion, and that is X-Men number 24, um, the classic Jim Lee Gambit and Rogue cover. Um, oh, wait, this is not Jim Lee. Uh, this is... Anyway, uh, 9.8 of this will run you 100 to $150. Raw copies can be had for around 10 um, and maybe a little higher on really nice condition ones. Um, so that's our first cover, X-Men number 24. Um, our second cover is X-Men 192. Um, this is a Chris Bachelot cover. Um, this one's a very cheap cover to get. Just a cool cover of Rogue, in my opinion. It's a 5 to $10 book, um, but definitely a cool cover. Next is, I have a very recent one. This is from last year's San Diego Comic-Con, and this was actually the thumbnail. And this is Uncanny X-Men number 21, the John Tyler Christopher San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Um, this one's going to run you 100 to 120 and a 9.8. Raw is anywhere from 50 to 100, which is kind of weird, but that's kind of where it's at. Um, our fourth cover is Marvel Swimsuit Special um, from 1993, um, just a gorgeous rogue and a swimsuit cover, but, um, and this is going to be a 10 to $20 book. So remind everyone, these covers aren't in any particular order. They're just how I ended up making the list as I was picking covers out. So these aren't like one to 10. These are just 10 covers I think are great. Um, next is Uncanny X-Men number 274. Um, and this is... I included this one because it is, Rogue is like, in fan art and stories and everything else, the whole Savage Land storyline is such kind of an icon, and that outfit is such an iconic part of Rogue's history. Um, this is really the only cover where she really appears that way, at least at the time. Um, so that is why I included it. Um, next is Astonishing X-Men number one, uh, the C cover, the Art Germ variant. And this is, 9.8 of this is going to run you $70 to $90 with uh, 10 to 20 for a raw copy. Um, just a gorgeous art germ cover. Um, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily big fans of art germ, but I really like this cover. And one of the few times, other than maybe that Christopher cover, that she's been, like, given the cover treatment by one of the current 
big time artist. She just really hasn't got a lot of these type of things where you see all kinds of these for uh, Jean and Storm and uh, Emma and Shylock, like the current big cover artists doing covers like this of them. You really don't get that with Rogue. This is one of the few. So that's another reason I included it here. Um, next at our seventh cover is Rogue Volume 3, number 6. Um, this is a cover price book. I just think it's a gorgeous cover. Several of the covers in this Rogue run, the third volume, um, are pretty, are gorgeous. This one was the one that made my list, though. Um, our eighth cover is Uncanny Avengers, number 7B. Uh, and this is the, the, the B cover. This is the Joel Jones, Women, Women in Power, Women of Power cover, um, this is maybe my favorite cover <laughs> out of this whole list, probably. Um, she just looks badass in this one to me. Um, 9.8 of this is only going to run you $30 to $50. Uh, raw copies are only 5 to 10 But I just, I'm a big fan of Joel Jones' art, and I just think she looks awesome in this particular cover. So Next, uh, we're going to have a little nostalgia for everybody, and this is... Most people would be like, why did you include this cover? I just thought this was a really fun cover. And this is from X-Men 92, not issue 92, X-Men 92, the series based on the animated series, uh, number eight. So X-Men 92, number eight. Um, and this is just a fun, her punching gladiator, like cartoony. I just think it's a really fun cover. I just, it made me laugh. I liked it. Um, and it's a $5 book. So, um, and finally, since we're doing 90s nostalgia for the X-Men TV show, is Uncanny Avengers number 25, the Jim Lee uh, variant. Uh, and this is just a gorgeous throwback to that 90s rogue uh, outfit um, done by Jim Lee. Uh, 9.8 of this, I would say, will cost you $150, but there's only been one sale of a 9.8. Not many of these have been slabbed. Um, in the last couple of years, so there's only been the one sale, so it's hard to say it's worth 150. It's just the only sale, um, but you can get raw copies for five to fifteen dollars of this. So that is our breakdown of Rogue. If I forgot any key storylines that you think should be mentioned, if I forgot any hot covers or missed them, um, let me know in the comments down below so other people can find those, and we will catch you next time.